This video is about a project I have been working on for quite some time and it's called a gyro clock. Uh, a gyro clock is a clock that shows time when you spin it around in a circle. Uh, it's a cool way to display time and it's something that you can carry around in your pocket. Uh, so let me show you how the gyro clock works. So this is the gyro clock. And to uh, display time, you have to put it into the display mode using a switch. And it has a beat string attached to it. And you hold the string on one end and you spin the device in a uh, counterclockwise direction. As you can see, the time is 4.24. 24. All right, let me put this back into the idle mode. Okay, so how does the gyro clock work? Um, as you can see, it has a single row of LEDs and it uses the motion to display a two dimensional image at uh, the time. So as the gyro clock moves uh, across uh, space, it draws the 2D image uh, one column at a time. And because it is moving fast, we are able to see the complete uh, 2D image. Now, one of the uh, challenges in this project is displaying uh, the time always at the top of the circle. Uh, we want to display the time and devices at the top because that is uh, where it's easiest to see it. Now, uh, how does the device know when it's at the top of the circle? <coughs> so, to do that, it has an accelerometer. The accelerometer measures the acceleration experienced by the device as it's uh, spinning around in a circle. Now, there are two main types of accelerations experienced by this device. Uh, one is the centrifugal acceleration, uh, which points from the center of the circle uh, towards the device. And the other is the acceleration due to gravity, which always points uh, down. So for example, when the device is at the top of the circle, the centrifugal acceleration points up, and the uh, acceleration due to gravity points in the opposite direction. And when the device is at the uh, bottom of the circle, both the centrifugal acceleration and the acceleration due to gravity uh, points in the same direction. So the device experiences the maximum acceleration when it's at the bottom of the circle, and it sees the minimum acceleration when it's at the top of the circle. So if we look at a graph of acceleration versus time, you will see a sine curve. And the minimum points in that sign curve correspond to when the device is at the top. So the gyro clock has a microcontroller that reads the acceleration values from the accelerometer. And when it detects a, the slope of the acceleration curve goes from a negative value to a positive value, it displays the time. So that's basically the main working principle behind gyro clock. Another thing is, how do you set the time? So as you can see, the gyro clock doesn't have any buttons. It has a switch. Uh, so to set the time, the gyro clock also uses uh, the accelerometer. Uh, let me show you uh, how to set the time. So the first thing you want to do is to hold it in uh, this orientation. And then you put the device into the time setting mode using the switch. So once the device is in the time setting mode, it starts a counter. And the value of the counter is displayed using the LEDs in binary form. Uh, so first you're going to set the hour and then after that we uh, set the minute. So when the 
counter value reaches the hour value that we want to set, we flip the device up and the device records that value as the hour value. And after that, we can follow in the same procedure, we can set the minute value. So let's set the time to um, 2.15. Uh, uh, so the counter counts all the way to 24 and starts over. So we'll wait until it starts over. That's one, two. Okay, now it recorded the two as the hour value, and now it's waiting for the minute value. So we wait until 15. 15. Okay, so now it has completed the time setting. The time should be now set to 2.15. Let's verify that. Let's put it back into. So you put it back into the display mode and it's been around and as you can see it's 215 time is 215 so you correctly set the time okay now I'm going to put it back into idle mode okay so uh, I made a case for the gyro clock uh, using uh, a 3D printer that I bought uh, recently and also if, uh, the gyro clock is powered by a rechargeable lithium ion polymer battery uh, I believe the capacity is 150 milliamp hour and it will last about um, 5 days or so depending on how often you use it and then you can recharge it uh, there's a micro USB uh, port uh, and you can just plug it into a uh, computer or a 5 volt adapter and you can charge it um, and so that's basically uh, the gyro clock and how it works and now I will show you what it looks like uh, on the inside okay let's take a quick look at what's inside the gyro clock so I have taken it out of uh, its case and this is the uh, gyro clock PCB and here you can see the microcontroller it's a uh, 80 mega 328p uh, AU uh, which is the same microcontroller that is uh, used in the Arduino boards and uh, over here we have the ADXL345 accelerometer from analog devices uh, this accelerometer can measure acceleration up to plus or minus 16G. And over here we have the micro USB connector. And this is the switch. And this small IC right here is the charger for the lithium ion battery. Uh, it's a MCP7383 um, from microchip. And over here we have a 32.768 kilohertz crystal which is used for the real-time clock and the real-time clock is implemented also in the 80 mega 328p microcontroller and that those are basically the main components uh, in the PCB and this PCB I designed it in KiCad and I got it fabricated from Oshpark uh, for a very a reasonable price and uh, most of the components I ordered them from uh, uh, DigiKey uh, and to assemble the components to the PCB board uh, I had to create my own uh, reflow oven and this is the reflow oven that I made from a $20 toaster oven and I used this to uh, assemble um, the components into the board and let me show you what's the back side in the back side you can see the the rechargeable lithium ion battery and that is basically uh, what the gyro clock uh, 
is made out of. So if you want to learn more about uh, this project, you can visit my project blog, which will be in the description below. And thank you for watching.